Hello, this is Trinot, and this is Gondarian's Blitzkrieg 2 in Case Blue, Operation Typhoon. It is the second player turn of the first turn of the game. The Russians are going. So I'm up to the movement phase, or the end of it. I've just completed the aircraft uh, barrage segment, so that's fun. Let's talk about what happened. First off, I rolled really well. Um, I couldn't refit all the aircraft, but I showed that in a prior video. The reinforcement phase, I got a really great roll for both supply, well, okay, roll for supply and a really great roll for uh, rebuilds. So I rebuilt a lot of units over in Moscow. Then I um, got like nine supply, 20 supply points. And I should mark, I think there's only seven and a half left. I actually have a little token down there that indicates that this is a supply dump, has a letter M, so this is supply dump M. And I mark the hex where it was as well. So, five and a two. Yeah, I want to say seven and a half supply points are left. I marked it somewhere. Ah, slidey, slidey. Okay, anyways, um, so it's, so yeah, sometimes supply stacks get so high that it's just easier to have them off the board. So, the Russians have an interesting difference between the Axis. The Axis have a lot of mobility and a lot of overrun capability. The Russians have really slow units, and if they want to do overruns, they have to be close to the enemy and be in move mode, and uh, given their lower action rating, the attacks are, would usually be kind of like suicide because surprise rolls would often favor the Axis. So for this movement phase, I actually didn't do any overrun combat. Instead, um, what I did was just position troops to be on the defensive because that's kind of what the Russians are doing right now. They don't really need to do much combat. I have marked a few places where I want to fight. But as it stands, um, most of the Russians' turn is trying to get units back in supply and, um, and then positioning them in better defensive stuff. Along with, uh, since the Russians have essentially all the railroad uh, on the, past the uh, front, so like this is kind of the Axis Railroad and then all of this is Russian. I tried to get about everything from Moscow, which is the only entry point I really had this turn, uh, over to the various fronts. So, over here, I think I have all the units in supply, but basically I just tried to shift some supply points over here, uh, get like one troop in as reinforcement. Over here, not much to say, uh, just uh, some front stuff in the defense, and we're not going to actually attack. Over here, I have an interesting situation. Um, I do not actually have supply trace for any of these units, so I'm using a tree bark soup counter, which I'm going to turn this way. So, tree bark soup is a mechanic that they kind of eat, kind of off the heavy woods, just like make some tree bark soup, essentially. And that feeds all the um, troops within five hexes that don't go through uh, enemy zone of control. And uh, that's going to cover all of this group. The problem is there's 10 tree bark soup counters in the game. And when a player uses one, they give it to the other player. Then they can use it for supply. So it's kind of a dangerous sacrifice. Uh, we're not going to worry about the back lines. I did ship supply points. I had like 15 supply points to, or rail cap, which means I can ship 15 supply points and units worth of um, stuff up to the front and just like teleport them essentially through the railroads. And I did a lot of that. Um, most of it was supply points, but uh, some of them were like a lot of... Uh, I got so many reinforcements from Moscow that I just shipped them up to the front. This front got a lot of supply points and troops. Um, and surprisingly enough, all the units are in supply there. I moved a few units in there. I think this DG'd unit here is actually out of supply. 
and I'm not going to bother with moving him because uh, I'm going to just knock pieces over if I do that. Uh, I do have, so I put another tree bark suit marker down so to supply these units, so I had to waste two. This headquarters is totally boned though. Um, they're going to have to roll for attrition. Uh, something I haven't yet to do really because I didn't have to worry about supply. This guy actually can eat off the map. He has supply tokens under him. So he is actually able to eat from those because it's not just ammo, it's also like some food and stuff. But the problem is he's not going to do that forever, so eventually he'll get cracked. I think this guy is also out of supply, but if he, but we're staying there and not trying to do a thing called breakout because uh, if he manages to survive, he'll be able to hurt people. Breakout is something where essentially units that are out of supply but can roughly get back to their um, back lines with more lenient tracing uh, come in at later turns or die trying. So on turn two, I actually am going to have some stuff coming in on turn, like in six turns later, I'm going to have that division come in. That's what that, those units on the turn track are doing. So, yeah, supply woe is essentially happening over here. Over here, um, it's a pretty straightforward front. There's not much, um, there's not going to be much attacking or defend, but not, but everything's kind of supplied and defended. Uh, we do have some aggression going on here, but we're still in supply for everything. I'll be doing a supply check, of course, to see what everything is in the, after this. Uh, everything's in supply here. They're uh, out, of out of supply points, but they can trace off to the edge of the map, uh, namely these guys. Same with this group. You may think this guy is um, in danger zone, but this guy can supply him even without that, even with that unit right there, because he can just go around. So, uh, specifically, if I went straight on the railroad, I'd be blocked by this guy, but I can just go around and not have to worry about him. Um, straightforward right here, nothing going on. I actually am going to see if I can do a fight over here. Um, and get like um, maybe this guy and this guy to fight that group. Actually, I think I mismarked that DG counter. Oh well, yeah. Well, let's pretend I didn't. I think I can surround them though. Um, so I'm going to try that in a second. Um, but these guys are kind of safe in supply because they kind of formed um, a guard for this line. So like the trucks can get through here to these guys and vice versa. Um, uh, this cluster right here where the map is kind of offset, uh, which really screws with things, is kind of a stalemate. So I'm not going to worry about that. I think these guys might have some supply issue, but, I don't, but maybe not. I think the 11th Panzer can't... Yeah, no, they're fine. Even as this organizes, the headquarters will be able to throw supply to them, which is nice. Um, again, stalemate over here. Uh, I retreated some guys back to guard the, this place more. Uh, I also put down a thing called train busting markers. Essentially, airplanes are harassing that area and it's going to cause, going to make it cost more movement points for enemies to enter that hex and go around it. Um, I tried to place a train busting up here and it didn't work, if I recall. So, and then we got glare. Over here, I just, uh, I, I kind of tightened my forces, and that's all I did here. Down here, I think I tried a barrage, and it didn't work out. And uh, I did some shipping points, so this area has a lot more supply points, and Sevastopol down here has some supply points, which you can further ship and transport stuff. Not much going on here in the back lines of Case Blue. Uh, I left, decided to leave units there and not rail transport them, because... Um, they're guarding key places anyways, so we're going to just leave them in the back lines as garrisons. And that's the current status of the movement phase, and uh, I might do some combat over here. Um, actually, probably not. I was going to do a barrage there, but it's in danger zone of that. That guy is um, close enough to any airplane barrages 
that all that would happen is um, they would get intercepted and shot down. So that's the movement phase of Case, uh, Case Balloon Gadurian's Blitzkrieg 2 and uh, second turn. It took a lot less time than, uh, than the Germans' turn, a lot less uh, tricky supply management, uh, a, lot, a little bit more rail cap, and it, and it also helps that I didn't have to um, record a lot of it at once. So I'll get back to you around the end of the turn. Just wanted to show a giant panorama of the map to celebrate the end of the first turn, the first full game turn. The Russians have finished all their steps. I left, left off at the movements phase and I checked supply. There were some units that were out of supply. I rolled for them and uh, they died. Uh, the attrition got them. I did do some tree bark soup markers. In fact, the axis over here have two of them as we see. So, then I went to reaction phase. The Axis, unlike the Soviets, have the ability to have aircraft do missions during the reaction phase, specifically barrages, and the Axis took full advantage of that, where there were precarious spots that looked like battles were going to happen. The aircraft, the Luftwaffe, came in and disorganized uh, threatening groups, which disincentivized the Russians from attacking. So, let's talk about combat. I didn't really um, do too much of it. I marked a couple of spaces where there were some combat. None really right here, if I recall. Just some maneuvering. Over here... I did have some combat, but it went poorly for the Russians. My surprise rolls were bad for the Russians, and they got completely hammered. Um, I believe that disorganized result is, uh, they were attacking that group, and I was attacking with um, two of these units under the Hedgehogs, and I suffered two step losses. The defender suffered nothing. I rolled the lowest I could on that battle result. So I didn't lose pe uh, the unit uh, markers themselves, the counters, but I did lose a step for each of them. Thankfully, they're still well defended, so hopefully those hedgehogs will hold. Um, over here, forget what this black marker is for. Oh, I think this was an attempt at an attack, and uh, didn't really work. So, either that or I forgot about it. Uh, this game has a lot to keep track of, but amusingly enough, Actually, I think I recall that um, I tried attacking and it just messed up. So that's fine. Over... I did do some aircraft barrages too, and uh, uh, like that 16th... Uh, that 6 Panzer with a disorganized marker over it uh, got complete... got pretty hit hard by uh, um, just some light aircraft bombings. Though there was some bits where a fighter tried to bomb and uh, like a full fighter mission, and then one Luftwaffe um, fighting like fighter got them all back, like abort their mission. That was uh, amusing. Poor Russians, they have such crap units. Have a lot of them though. So down here was my most successful combat. Uh, there was on that red cube a, um, sorry, a, uh, hands, uh, 24 3, like one of these units, um, infantry division. It is now here. I, um, had a, um, a kind of weaker tank go in, and then it got an exploit marker, and it tried to push the advantage by attacking that guy, but got killed instead, so bleh. But uh, that does leave this open gap, which this guy's exerting zone of control through, which puts this guy out of supply. And so that's actually really the good part right there. Though I think that might be fixed later when the Germans move forward, so maybe it's not that good of a combat. But I did push some stuff forward there. 
and zone of control is being exerted so that does put a little bit of pressure on the uh, on the axis over here I landed some train busting markers as before um, I didn't really want to attack this disorganized group right here and I think it worked out okay actually no I did fight them and uh, I think the disorganized group had to suffer step loss but the um, 1443 infantry division there had to take a step loss as well. So, nah. yeah, I killed one unit there, um, which which is okay, not too bad. And that really is all of the combat that happened. In an exploitation phase, all that all that really got there was a uh, one exploitation guy tried to press the advantage and died. And then I cleaned up all the markers. You may notice there's a lot less disorganized markers on the Russians because that goes away at the end of their turn. There's still some on the um, Axis side and it'll go away at the end of their turn. So that's kind of how cleanup works. And that is officially the first turn of the game out of 178. And we'll see um, how many more turns I can pull off. I don't think I'm going to go through phase by phase anymore. Uh, I'll just go through chunks. And next up we'll roll to see who goes first for next turn.